All right, everyone. In the last video, we learned about the cake shop scenario and how it relates to the three core concepts in Redux. First, we have the store, which holds the state of your application. Second, we have actions, which describe what happened in the application. Third and final, we have reducers, which carry out the actual state transition based on the current state of the application and the action received. All that is good, but how do these core concepts translate to code? We are writing JavaScript applications. So how do we write code that represents these concepts? Well, that is where the three principles of Redux come into picture. These principles basically describe the Redux pattern. Let's take a look at them one at a time. The first principle tells you that the global state of your application is stored as an object inside a single store. In simple terms, with Redux, we are told to maintain our application state in a single object, which would be managed by the Redux store. If you are relating to the cake shop example, let's assume we are tracking the number of cakes on the shelf. We then would represent the state of our cake shop application as a single object that contains a property indicating the number of cakes. This object would then be managed by the Redux store. So the first principle, all of your state stored in a single object. The second principle tells you that the only way to change the state is to dispatch an action an object that describes what happened. In simple terms, if you want to update the state of your application, you need to let Redux know about that with an action. You're not allowed to directly update the state object. If we are relating to the cake shop example, we are not allowed to directly take the cake from the shelf. Instead, we need to scan the QR code and place an order. Our action is cake ordered. And how do we represent an action in code? Well, it is a simple object that contains a type property describing the event. For our cake shop example, it is an object where the type property is the string cake underscore ordered. So the second principle, state is read only, and the only way to change the state is to emit an action, which is an object describing what happened. The third and final principle tells you that to specify how the state tree is updated based on actions, you write pure reducers. So the second principle told us that state can only be transformed by dispatching actions. But how should the state update is what the third principle covers. And it tells us that we need to write pure reducers to determine how the state changes. Pure reducers are basically pure functions that take the previous state and an action as inputs and return the next state. And being a pure function, the reducer, instead of updating the previous state, should return a new state. In our cake shop example, the reducer is the shopkeeper. When you order a cake, he will take one off the shelf, reduce his cake count by one, print a receipt, and then hand you the cake. The same in our JavaScript application, would be a function that accepts the current state and the action as parameters. Based on what the action type is, a new state object is returned. In our scenario, the type is cake ordered. So we simply reduce the cake count by one and return that new count. And this behavior will always remain the same for a given input. If the current count is x, the new count will always be x minus 1 when the action is cake underscore ordered. So third principle, to update the state of your application, write pure reducers. 
Now, if you've understood this far, here is how you can visualize the three principles. We start off with our application, which is a simple JavaScript application. The state of the application is maintained separately in the Redux store. Our application is always subscribed to this Redux store. However, the app cannot directly update the state. If the application wants to update the state, it has to emit or dispatch an action. Once an action has been dispatched, the reducer then handles that action and updates the current state. As soon as the state is updated, the value is then passed on to the application because the app is subscribed to the store. This is pretty much the fundamentals of Redux. All right, we now have sufficient knowledge about Redux, its core concepts and its principles to start coding our basic application. So starting next video, let's put together all the bits and pieces of code we have seen so far and implement our cake shop application in JavaScript. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.